Right, now, I've said it's nothing to do with politics, but we all know that we need to have another look at the way politics um, is going. And we've got two fantastic people here today. I can't actually see them, but I have seen them before. So I've got Neil Petrie and Richard Borna. Now, we've also, just coming up after that, we've got Nicholas Walker and Mark Steele. So we've got two versions of Morecambe and Wise, or we've got Cannon and Ball, and I'm not sure which way we go here, but we're starting off with Neil and Richard. And I tell you, this is something very well worthwhile looking at. Neil Petrie, Richard oh, Borner. Okay, right, great. Thank you all for coming. And as you've seen, Alan's with Direct Democracy, and you've seen how effective we are already. All right. <laughs> Direct democracy, you have to think about what we've got now. Representative democracy is the word that is used to um, basically make a slumber. Okay, we've got a representative. Now, you've got to think about the Roman Republic was huge and it was run as a direct democracy. It then slumbered and went into the Roman Empire after hundreds of years of freedom. Can you all hear me fine, by the way? Yes. Great. So, when you look at what we've got today, and you look at America, can anyone tell me what the first three words are in the United States Constitution? We the people. We the people. Does it say we the representatives? No. no. Does it say we the parties? No. We the dictators? No. Or the elite? No, it says we the people. And if you look at the old Constitution, it's in huge letters. We the people, and the rest of it is small. This was a psychological trick on their part to say to you, me, and everyone else in America that this is how you're going to be in power with this new democracy that we're developing. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to use some democratic means to get you all involved, because Liz has asked me to get a bit of audience participation. So I'll need a couple of victims. <laughs> OK. Right. It's very simple. I'm going to pretend. I'm the chief whip. You can call me Mr. Rich, all right? Not Rishi, Rich, all right, Mr. Rich. I'm the chief whip. And if those of you who know much about politics, you'll know I tell you what to do when you're the MP. So when you're one of the new MPs who's just come into Parliament, I'm going to have a conversation with you about how you follow what I tell you to do if you wish to get that junior minister's job down the road. So what we're looking for is vain, power-crazy people because they all go into politics, you see. So that's what we do. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to have a little conversation, if you don't mind. All right. You don't have to do anything, but it's just the victim. All right, don't worry. <laughs> right. Now, I'm going to say, we've got a new law coming up. And what we're going to do is we're going to let all of these people coming in on the boats stay in Britain for six months only, and then they're going to get amnesty. And we're going to give them right to residence here in Britain. OK. Now, the people aren't going to like it. But that doesn't matter now. We got voted in, and now you're a new MP, and you've got ambition, haven't you, Tony? You see? <laughs> so that's, what, that's, what, that's how it's played in reality, you know, and behind all closed doors. When they've got a three-line whip, otherwise you're out like Corbyn, or you're out like An Andrew Bridget. So, Tony, bearing in mind you want that promotion and you want to keep that pension, what do you say to that new law? Do you say yes or no? Well, I know what I would say. I know what you said, but you're playing Tony now, so on, come on, play along with me, please. I have experience from, yeah. from life, you know, I know yeah. now, I've right. been lying. He knows a lot, but the bottom line is, the real Tony, of course, is going to say yes. Okay, now, direct democracy, the example for you is this, right, what happens in Switzerland, for instance, every law that comes out, Tony's passed it, and it's all been approved by Parliament, but then the people have the final say. You have direct control of it. This has been working for 175 years, ladies and gentlemen. It works very effectively. Lowest murder rate in the world. One of the highest salary groups in the world. Very powerful. Great education system. Because it's run by the people at county level. This is why it's good. Because the people run it, not the politicians. Right, so what happens is, it comes out and someone, this lady here, doesn't like that law. So she puts together a petition and she says, Will you sign this petition that will say, I want to stop that law? And then you have to get, basically, about 1% of the population to sign your, oh, sorry, the uh, elected, uh, electors to sign your petition. At which point, 
If you can get that 1%, you're going to then get a national referendum on it. So this is direct democracy in a simple form. So you get referendums based on people bothering to object to laws. It's not every law is going to get that. You can't discuss every single law at the national level, obviously. So that's how it works. So I'll just do a quick thing here. If we could take a survey of this half of the room, you're going to be the people who represent uh, the people who would wish to sign. She needs she needs one percent. So would you support her in objecting to giving people immediate amnesty after six months? Would you stick your hands up? Have we got more than one percent there? Do you think this side has? Do you think we've got more than one percent? I think we have. Yeah. There you go. So she's now got she's now got the right to a, a national vote. And then, if we look now, everybody in the room, we're now going to the national referendum, okay? And it's first past the post, so we need 50%, you could say, of the people to stick their hands up saying they support this lady's petition to stop that amnesty. So could you stick your hands up if you agree with that? Have we got 50%? Yeah, there you go, go, thank you very much, pass. See, that law no longer, no longer exists. So that's what you might call the safety mechanism for direct democracy. It's a negative way. It's a way of controlling Tony and his crooked mates. All right? Not not, the, not this one, but you know, the real Tony. Uh, so uh, the, the second thing is a more uh, initiative where you can use your initiative. I'm going to check my time and see how long I've got. Right. Yeah. Right. So with the initiative, what is this man here? this lady here, whoever it is, you've decided, you want to put forward a proposal that says, we're going to send, we're going to rehire a lot of the recent, recently uh, retired judges so that they can quickly go through the backlog of those down on the coast or wherever who are being held now so that you can then say, we wish to uh, get the judges hired for a year and they're going to go through the backlog quickly so these people will have to go back if they've got you know, false asylum uh, applications. So again, this is an initiative. Now on this occasion, you need 2% of the population to get a national referendum, because it's not coming from you know, stopping a parliamentary one, it's a new idea. So if you just get an idea, it's just a way of seeing, would you support getting more people involved so that they could control the uh, asylum process more swiftly? So on this side of the house only, there we are, we need 2%. We've we got 2%, can you say that side? Yeah, 2%. That's it then, so that's passed. Now we go on to the national referendum. Simple again. Everybody in the house, would you stick your hand up if you supported that? There we go. Yeah, that's probably about 50%. Richard, you reckon? Yeah. Good. There we are. That's it. So in simple terms, this is how it works. It's more complicated than that in, in some ways, because you can do this and that in terms of you know amending the law rather than just stopping it. But that is direct democracy. And the old Roman Republic had a saying that uh, that which touches all should be approved by all. Okay, very simple old idea, but that was a long time ago, you know, before the emperors took over, before, you know, uh, what's his name, Augustus Caesar, set it up as a huge con, and they ran it as an empire from that time onwards. But for hundreds of years, the people had run the Roman Republic, and that's why it became the Roman Empire famous around the world for running the whole of the Mediterranean and beyond. So direct democracy can work in large scale, at a Roman Empire scale, just before the Roman Empire, and it can work small scale in somewhere like Switzerland, also in Taiwan, believe it or not, the last 30 years. Would you rather live in Taiwan or China? Hands up please. Taiwan? <laughs> China? Oh, not so many. <laughs> So that's what we've got. This is the problem, you know, we have to change the system. You can change the system. You need to think about how you could uh, actively take over by just getting votes. That's why my book is called One Vote Away. Because Lord Sumption reminds us that we only need one vote to change the constitution. That's it. And this system I'm talking about, particularly the referendum system here, was supported by A.V. Dicey who is the greatest constitutional lawyer in our history. Okay, his books are famous on this. Victorian era, and he said, get rid of the lords, replace them with the referendum of the people on all important constitutional issues. So, this is another bit. I'm not gonna bang my gums on about it too long. 
I'm, I'm ex military guy myself, and I believe in the vote. As, as Abraham Lincoln said, ballots beat bullets. That's it. We want ballots. And we want people to volunteer to go out and basically push the idea of direct democracy on the door and to use what I'm going to hand over to Richard for briefly about the uh, direct democracy system in terms of how you can use a voting app. Now, it's technical, it's not the only thing you might use, but it is certainly a huge step forward. Uh, Richard's a very modest guy, but he worked at CERN on the Hadron Collider. So he's Mr. Wise, I'm Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Richard, if you want to briefly explain a bit about uh, why you, you set it up and uh, what's the objective of it, what the security issues are with it, and why you think why it is better than any government one, and then finally, how can they get involved in using it? Thank you. Well, thanks for your introduction. On the way over, I was thinking um, about the best way to explain what block vote is. I mean, it, at an objective level, it's um, a voting app, simple. It's, Can you it's hear very it? easy um, to use and very limited in its functionality. Um, so block vote um, is based on, shall we say, post-quantum secure, carbon neutral, cost-efficient blockchain technology. And it allows people to make a vote Yes, yeah, quite a mouthful. It takes, it takes quite a lot of explanation, but when you see it, um, our partners and independent political candidates up and down the country will put in simple questions like, do you support the expansion of ULEZ, or maybe do you want to sign up to a treaty? And it, 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 expedite, it expedites the votes that, that Neil has put forward to you. Um, now, the difference is, and, and the reason we need it, is that I would ask you to imagine any voting app that you're familiar with, maybe a Twitter poll or a Facebook poll or a government ballot, these things um, are all owned by a company or an entity and they're centralised. So when you make a vote, ultimately the vote goes through to a, a corporate database and in that room there's a technician that sits there managing the database and there's all sorts of structures around that. And people that can alter your vote, they own that technology and they own the results of that technology. So when you consider a direct democracy, I think one of the most important concepts that you should have is uh, the ability to trust the application that you're voting on. And that's where the blockchain comes in. So a blockchain, in simple terms, I know I've only got a minute to explain it, is a database that everybody has a copy of. And once a record has been written in that database, nobody can change it. I can't change it. Block vote can't change it. The government can't change it. It's immutable. And it's there on the public record forever. Um, everybody can see it. And on our app, on block vote, the votes are counted by a computer program, a smart contract, that's also publicly available. And you can have a look at it and audit the code if, if you're minded to, or somebody can, and point out any problems with it. But I think the point is, it's the only way that we can move forward and trust the results of any given referendum or question that's put to us uh, in the public. I think you know, that, that's the best way I could explain what Blockbird does. Right. And in terms of how people can sign up and use it, and uh, at a local level, for instance, I think, is Monty here? Monty, here we go. All right, signed up and is using the system now, and is using it at a local level for his, his questions for his uh, people in his council area. So if you could explain maybe briefly about where they go to look at it and uh, how they'd sign up. Oh, sure. Um, so Block Vote is an app, it's available at www.blockvote.org, B-L-O-C-Vote.org. And you can sign up fairly easily with it. We don't gather your information, we don't track you across the internet. In fact, we do the opposite where we can. Um, it requires an email address um, and a proof of your location, and we need that to make sure that you're able to vote in your parish or your ward or your constituency. Once we've verified you, um, all of that information is deleted permanently from our records. Nobody can ever get that back again. 
um, and you're then onboarded to the system. And we've worked with independent political candidates. They're not part of our organisation, like Monty, who want to put votes to their wards and their parishes and their constituencies. Um, and we invite them to come along and join us and use us as a tool to um, promote direct democracy. Right, so I'll, I'll round up there. You've got a system, basically, that allows you, anybody, to start applying your common sense and your common decency to put forward ideas that are supported by your local people. Now, you can go as local as a parish council, right to MP, any of them. And you could start putting votes to people, as, a, as, as Monty's doing now, to his, his parish council group. They can then see what's going on. We've got other people doing similar things and they're calling more public meetings and they're getting people involved and explaining. And people are turning to them and saying, Look, no one listens to us. You're the first one you know, who's after these public meetings has got people involved. It's going to take a bit of activity, you know, uh, but if that's the whole point. We've got to use our initiative. That's why it's called the initiative, you know, when you want to take something on. I'm ex-military man. It's all about the initiative. We can sit down and do nothing and wait for it to come and uh, take us in the back, or we can go out and sort it out, and we can sort it out. The point is, there's millions and millions of us, and there's billions around the world who would like a system like this. Now, Richard's developed Blockwork in his own time and his own money. He's an expert, as I've said, and th this is what we need. We need people to start stepping up, really, and coming forward. It won't be forever, but eventually it will be forever, in that once you've got the system, you'll occasionally have to vote. The Swiss have to vote four times a year to have control of their country. I don't think that's a big price, do you? No, it's not a big price. So if we've got to do that, and we have occasional referendums, but instead of sitting there talking about the rubbish on the telly, you can be talking about what's going on in the world and how we're going to sort out our schools. How are we going to sort out our hospitals? How are we going to sort out anything you can think of? These things can be discussed openly, or should be. Uh, we should be able to discuss them openly, unless you're on YouTube with Richard, of course, because that's a different man. So th this is what direct democracy is about. It's not about having just direct democracy. You've still got people like better versions of Tony. As I said to someone earlier at the back there, can anyone here please name a Swiss politician? Oh, yeah. you, you don't need to. They're doing a job. 12 weeks of the year, that's all they work. 12 weeks. They do uh, four, three-week stints, and they've got other jobs because they're doing what the people tell them. You know, uh, If you're a Swiss, you can turn around and say, really, here, the people really do rule. Okay, And it's not, we the people, with a big sign above us saying, we the, pe we, the people are suckers. No. They don't have that in Switzerland. They don't have that in Taiwan. Taiwan uses direct democracy. Sun Yat-sen, who set up the original Republic back in the 1920s, had travelled to the States and had seen how it worked in California in some places. They use it at the state level. 49 of the American states uh, use direct democracy referendums to decide any changes to their constitution. 49 out of 50. They've never had a national one. They're scared stiff of it because the military industrial complex will be over, won't it? This is the point. Now, this is where we come up against the politicians who will not change. So we have to do a split so we work from the bottom up and we take over. Or we sit there and wait for it, you know, we're all hanging from lampposts. That's it. Now, I'll tell you now, my mates, ex military guys, I, I called one the other day and I said to him, the ex marine, and he, I said, What's your feeling now? And he said, everyone I speak to, he says, the ex-military is a revolutionary. That's a terrible state of affairs when all the ex-military guys, who are the ones who are there supposed to be defending our nation, think the only way to defend it is to go revolutionary. This is where we're at. Okay, so it is what it is, but this is a peaceful way. It's balance beat bullets. Let's remember that. Okay? Now, the changes are one vote away, because Lord Sumption told us that. I tell you all about it in my book. It's going cheap on the back. 
not but all the all the all the funding goes back into this campaign to make sure that we do get direct democracy. Like Richard, his motivation is not money. He's put his time and effort into this. He's got he's got a daughter. He wants to see has a better future for all of us. I've got several grandchildren. I want to see them have a better future. Okay, and that's what it's all about. And the last one. Alan just reminded me, my wingman here with the speakers, he, uh, he reminded me that we trusted other people with the referendum before. A bunch of politicians. It's like being divorced 20 times and saying, I've just found the right woman. You know? Yeah, right, good luck, mate. You know? you know? This ain't happening. You know? Get another party, another you know, reform or whoever. Unless they take their democracy, they're just another bunch of jokers. Splitting the vote and all the rest of it. Complete waste of time. So I'd ask you, go away and tell all your friends, your family, don't back anyone unless they're back in direct democracy. And preferably they're completely independent. Okay, but that is what I would say. Unless we get direct democracy, it's going to, carry, it's going to get a lot worse, as Richard has said. As we've all seen, it's not just going to be eating bugs. It's going to be false or in more jabs full of what else, God knows what, literally, tragically, as millions of people are finding out. All right, so that's it, direct democracy for me. I hope it's for all of you. We'll and we'll hit, be in the back. Yeah, 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 we'll be in the back. Uh, so, um, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Let the people rule, that's, a, that's direct democracy. Thank you very much.